Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen of the Iowa House. I offer this amendment today because our world is hurting. Humanity, our collective pain, generational traumas are oozing and festering across our globe. I suspect this could be in part because of the fact our governing institutions have outlawed, prohibited, naturally occurring healing tools. In this chamber, we're great at writing laws, adding new sections of code. Rarely do we eliminate laws or revisit laws that we've passed. This amendment would delete two words from the Iowa Code, two words you've probably never heard of and probably don't know what they mean. Psilocybin and psilocin. They're compounds in certain species of mushrooms that support the nervous system and offer expanded perspective. They're referred to as entheogens, and they have, as we're learning, many clinical applications. Psilocybin, I sincerely believe, could open up Iowa to a whole new world of health and healing, revolutionizing our health care, revolutionizing mental health, where right now we have a system of treatments where a person has to take a pill, a synthetic pharmaceutical for an indefinite period of time, maybe for the rest of their life. These treatments at best make a person's symptoms manageable. Modern pharmacology only alleviates and masks symptoms rather than actual healing. This amendment to decriminalize psilocybin would offer an actual cure to diseases afflicting society and give people freedom from a life dependent on synthetic pharmaceuticals. So that's the intention of the amendment, and you might be asking, well, what's the downside? What are the potential unintended consequences? I don't believe there is a downside to this amendment. I've seen no evidence of any criminality or abuse of these substances, and I've looked. In fact, I've found the opposite. Let me share some stories on what's happening in my community. I've become acquainted with a person that was crippled with an addiction to prescription opiates. An opiate addict who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on inpatient treatments only to inch closer to death as the opioid demons, the demons that were originally prescribed to him by his physician, slowly consumed him. Thankfully, this person came across psilocybin and was able to make tremendous progress on his opioid addiction. But let's bear in mind that the opioids that were killing him were legal, sanctioned and approved by the state. The mushroom that saved him was not. Why, why do we allow prescription heroin, but not a naturally occurring substance? When did nature become criminal? I have a friend with a benign tumor right in the center of his brain. It causes him to shake and tremble. And there's really no options for him. But my friend isn't a quitter. When the doctor says there's nothing he can do, my friend looks deep within himself, makes a conscious decision to support his health, and begins to cultivate the earth so he can take very small doses of psilocybin to treat his condition. I have another friend, and I, I wish I could name these people, but as recent protests have illustrated, many Iowans do live in fear of law enforcement. And uh, this friend is a diabetic. He has neuropathy, or well, I should say he had neuropathy, burning sensation in his feet, nerve damage that causes extreme discomfort. Doctor says there's nothing he can do. Doctor says it's impossible for nerve damage to heal. Well, my friend looks deep within himself, makes a conscious decision to take his health destiny into his own hands, begins cultivating the earth, asking for God's help to heal his chronic condition. And what do you know, he combines psilocybin with another species of mushrooms, lion's mane, which is a culinary legal mushroom, supplements for a few weeks, and his neuropathy has vanished. He can walk fine. He can jump for the first time in many, many years. Does anyone in this chamber suffer from neuropathy? I know this sounds difficult to believe, and I wouldn't have believed it either had I not seen it with my own eyes and had these conversations face to face. If there's any truth to the potential of neuroregeneration, of neuroregenerative, as many people believe and claim to have experienced, this could potentially radically alter our medical approach to tragic neurological disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. But as the law is written now, we'll never know. One last constituent who got himself into trouble as a younger man, a lot of tough problems, needed to get his life back on track, comes across a healthy dose of psilocybin, managed to piece back together his fractured psyche, and joined an elite military unit. And now he's a leader in our community and a leader in his industry. Now I know we can't make policy based on anecdotes, so thankfully John Hopkins, new research center dedicated to exploring and understanding these therapies, now exists to, gives us, to give us the tangible 
evidence we need, and science to guide our decisions. And the science is indeed impressive. One very impressive finding was that a single therapy could create permanent positive change in a person. And when they followed up with that patient a year later, the positive change actually increased over time. Wow, holy smokes, right? What other medicine does that? None, because the medicines we use are synthetic pharmaceuticals created in a lab. These substances, these mushrooms are created by God. The city of Denver adopted this policy over a year ago. I took the opportunity to examine the Denver experiment on this topic, and I'm proud to report to the Iowa House today that absolutely no problems have occurred. Advocates are working hand in hand with law enforcement, and the culture has become extremely self-regulating. The practitioners exploring these treatments understand the gravity and the seriousness. It's a culture of respect. It's proving that free men and women can indeed govern themselves. I have every reason to believe it'll be the same in Iowa. City of Oakland, California actually took a much broader uh, action than Denver. Decriminalized nature was the name of their campaign. I have no first-hand knowledge of the situation in Oakland, but I mention it because these policies are being debated and enacted across the country. Decriminalize nature. Why as a society, why in this great mystery of life where these things occur naturally on our planet, everything under the sun is of God, is from God, for us, for our benefit, why make it illegal? I'm bringing this amendment forward because House File 248 did not receive a hearing this assembly. And I suspect that's why the subcommittee wasn't held, because there just simply isn't any logical or rational argument to keep these criminal. Why criminalize a substance that has zero potential for abuse and unlimited potential for health and healing? Let's put the guns down. The state of Iowa doesn't need to be threatening people with jail, threatening to lock people up at a cage for cultivating what naturally exists in the soil. Why not try liberty? The liberty of each and every person to act in their own best interest. The liberty of each of us has, not just as citizens of Iowa, the greatest state in the nation, but as children of God. Please, please, can we break these cycles of pain and trauma? Let's heal. Let's adopt this amendment. It's time for the politicians to step aside and let the people lead. Let us just delete these two words from Iowa code. Let us give the people of Iowa the freedom to create genuine healing from the inside out. Genuine healing from the inside out. That's what this amendment will accomplish. Those are my comments and I'm happy to take any questions.